every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. And this is my preaching buddy, Greg Stevens. Praise God. Professor Greg Stevens. I, uh, I've been directed uh, by the Spirit of God to talk about the spirit of power. Mm-hmm. So we'll introduce him from book number one, Absolutely. verse number one. Yes, sir. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, there he is, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Now, I want you to notice something here, class. The Spirit of God was moving. He's always moving. But nothing happened until God said. That's right. The power release was there once He said it. Now, notice, and God saw the light that it was good. Now, that was not sunshine because that happened, what, four days later? That's correct. That's correct. So, now. The sunshine's temporary. He made that for us so we would know times and seasons. But he released light because darkness was on the face of the That's right. Now, I want you to notice something. Light travels 186,000 miles a second. The first 24 hours, 16,094,764,800 miles of universe. And no wonder he's called the king of the universe. Wow. <laughs> it's still expanding. It's still, oh, you know, at the speed of light. My, my, my. And it's, it's to the place now nobody can search the end of it. Hmm. But there were 16 billion miles the first 24 hours. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now, that's book one. Let's go to book last. (laughs) The beginning, he was there. In the 10th chapter of the book of Revelation, the angel in in the fifth verse, the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are therein are and the earth and the things therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. He's in the first book and he's in the last book. (laughs) The beginning and the end. He created time for us, like I just said, so that we would know the seasons and the hours and the days. But at the end of this, when he's creating a new heaven and a new earth, the one who was worthy to take the book, because there was no one worthy to take the book, this messenger, this angel comes down, and he is undoing all of that. And now there is no more need for the temporary, because we're in the reality of this. We'll have spiritual, physical bodies, as well as our spirit. That's right and will we'll be like it originally was. So when you say that he was hovering, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the Genesis 1, that's the Ruach Elohim in Hebrew, mm-hmm. or the Ruach HaKadosh, the, the Holy Spirit. The, the, the Spirit in the, is a Hebrew word. The Hebrew tongue is a bottomless pit of treasure, Brother Copeland. <laughs> if you really want to talk about power, the power it's as big as God himself. Matter of fact, his name, El, is part of power. And so when you break this thing down, it would take us a month of programs to even scratch it. Oh. Uh, to, when we talk about I don't it. think you could ever do it. No. 
Probably not. It would just, <clears throat> he would keep revealing himself over and over and over and over. Jesus said in, in the last Seder, mm -hmm. in the 14th chapter yes. John. of John. Let's turn over there and okay. look at that. John, the 14th chapter. And uh, I, I want to remind you once again, 13th and 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th chapters of John are all, it, it's that last Seder meal. It's the last Passover meal before the new covenant. He introduced the new covenant there in that meal and then went right straight from that meal to the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross. To the grave, to hell, and, and back. Yeah. Now notice, I want you to notice what he said. John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then he came down to the 10th verse, believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father, listen, the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. The one that dwells in him. Now in the fourth chapter of Luke, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He had just been baptized in the That's Jordan right. by John. That's right. 30 years old entered into his ministry. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach. So now notice this in the 21st verse, I have it circled. I mean, I, I drew a red box around it. He that has my commandments. Now he just got through in the 13th chapter introducing the new commandment of love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Remember when they asked him, what's the greatest commandment tempting him? Right. He said, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself, fulfilling all the law and the prophets. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father and I'll love him and I will manifest myself there it to is. him. See, Jesus was smart enough to know that the power he's operating in is delegated power from the Father. Yes. Any power that we operate in is delegated power. Now, that goes to this. People often say that seeing is believing. But did you know the Bible teaches just the opposite yes. of that? It says that hearing is more important than seeing. And I'll show you Deuteronomy 6.4, it's the most famous prayer in Israel. It's called the Shema. It's hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, oh, the yes. Lord is one. So hear, O Israel, not see, hear. How does faith come? Hearing. By hearing. So it's, it is more important than, than seeing it. So the earth was out without form and void in Genesis 1 until God said something. The earth heard what he said. Now that's what Jesus was quoting. That's what he's quoting. Right there. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit down and sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you, when you lie down and when you rise up. That's being God inside minded. That's right. So now notice hearing caused action. Yes, it did. You can't just hear the word of God and there not be action. When the earth heard him speak, light be, the universe had action took place. So we can't just hear the word. And that's why so many Christians are, are weak and anemic. They hear it and don't ever do anything. With that's it. right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of, of God. So the book of Isaiah says something very interesting. In Isaiah 59 and 19, he talks about, well, let me just, let, let's, uh, like a rushing tide. Let me just show it to you. Isaiah 59. It's a very familiar passage, and I want to get it right. Isaiah 59, verse 19 says, 
the enemy, when, uh, halfway down the verse, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And you read that in the original Hebrew, it's, it, it alludes to like a flood, like a river, like a, like a wash in the desert people, or like a tide. People have read that with the wrong emphasis. The people read it, when the enemy comes in like a flood. A flood is an uncontainable force. When the enemy comes come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's the way God moves. It's like a flood. There's nothing. It's like the tide. You cannot stop the tide from rising and lowering. I just had this thought. That's the difference between God inside minded people and power of the devil minded people. Oh, like the, like a flood, the devil comes in. Well, but the Lord will raise a standard up against him. No. Praise God. When the enemy shall come in, put a comma there. Like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now the, the cross reference says, put him to flight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So here's that word, the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. That's the Ruach. That's the Spirit of God. Now, Paul had great insight into this new inside mindedness that we walk in when he said, um, the same Spirit oh, yeah. that raised Jesus Romans from the 11. dead oh, yes. now dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body. But he put an if in front of that. Uh huh. If the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Dwell means live, yes. alive in you. If you don't even know he's there, don't pay any attention to him, pay little or no, or you don't ever listen, then he, he's not dwelling. He's just hanging around. <laughs> well, it's like him hovering over the face of the deep. Now, Brother Copeland, I have to put my mouth over my body aligned with the same spirit that dwells in me. Over in, uh, you're looking up a verse. I got one here for you in John chapter 6. Probably one of the, one of the most important questions the disciples ever asked. Every now and then you get a, you get a good one yet. Yeah, you, you get it right. And here we go in, in Mark, or I'm sorry, in uh, John. Let me find it here. John 6, verses 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might um, work the works of God? In other words, how do we do the power that you have? How do we do this? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God or the power of God that you believe on him whom he sent. Jesus didn't tell them something to do. He said the truth is in what you're going to believe because you're going you're to say what you believe. You'll do what you believe. Mm. And he said, you got to believe on him who they sent. Over there in Revelation 10, we got an angel who's been sent. We have the Holy Spirit being sent in, in chapter one. It's all delegated power from the throne of God himself. Doing the works of God comes from a foundation of what you believe. If you want to do the power of God, it comes from a foundation of what do I really believe? What's really in me? Because that's where that inside mind in this comes from. Yes, it is. What do I believe? Do I believe that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me or do I not? And it'll, it'll be revealed in my mouth. Sure. It, it always is. Yeah, absolutely true. Today, many preachers teach that you got to do this or you got to do that or you got to do the other thing, but we really don't. We teach that revival will happen when we begin to do this. No, when we begin to believe correctly, that's when we'll see the power of God manifested in our lives. Praise God. Amen. That's right here in this eighth chapter of Romans. Oh, yeah. Now, where he said, back up. Now, he said that in the 11th verse. If the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells within you. But now, now back up. 
verse, let's go back all the way to the first verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There hmm. he is. There he is. That, that, that's the reason he referred to him here. That's right. Because he brought him in, he brought him in here right. in the very first. And you come down, for the law of the Spirit, glory to God, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Come down to the fifth verse. For they that are after flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but after the spirit, the things of the spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, or the Spirit, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Look at the ninth verse. Yes. <laughs> but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You've got to believe that. I mean, you have to use your faith to believe that, that that is the reality in my life. And then I'm going to start talking like that, and I'm going to start thinking like that, because you've got to, you've got to by faith grab that. Nobody's going to tell you. You know, let me remind you who you are. No, you're going to have to remind yourself, especially in in times like we stir it up and stir that Keep gift it up. up. The power is the inherent characteristic of God. Yes, it is. And once He released power, Brother Copeland, into the earth, once He released power into the universe, it keeps going. There's How? no end to it. God anointed. Yes. Let's look at it. <laughs> Acts chapter 10. Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, this is good. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 38, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God. The power mm -hmm. was God mm -hmm. dwelling in him. That's right. Well, Brother Copeland, that's Jesus. We couldn't do that. No, it's God. That's right. <laughs> that's right. It was God. But he can't do that through you and I. Well, when he, he was 29, he, God couldn't have done it through him. That's exactly right. He wasn't old enough. That's exactly right. The Levitical law determined that he had to be 30 years old. Mm -hmm. When Joseph was in prison, And the guy forgot him for two years. Two years later, Joseph was 30. That's right. And became prime minister. That's absolutely right. But now here's, here's how we have a better covenant. I was 30 when I went to Oral Roberts University. Praise God. That's not a coincidence. No, I didn't know it at the time. Sure. I just thought, well, you know. <laughs> but I, when I look back on it and, and saw it, that was when I was supposed to be there. Now, Peter's going to get up in Acts chapter 2 with this new covenant when the church was born, and he's going to say, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days, your sons and daughters. See, now the Holy Spirit can reside in somebody younger than 30. That's right. Now, see, we have a new covenant on better promise. What did Jesus tell them? Go back to Jerusalem and tarry there, tell you, learn how to dance in the Holy Ghost, tell you, learn how to get goosebumps. He said, no, go back till you're endued with power. And stay there till it happens. Stay there till you get it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's right. And that's what's that is what's happened to us. Let me show you a verse in Romans 1. Romans chapter 1. Oh man, I'm telling you what. I'm... Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the just shall live by faith. We know that. Go on down now and look at verse uh, 20 here. 
for the invisible things of him, taking it back to creation, yes, sir. this is one, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power of and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We now have tapped into that initial power through the power of God resident on the inside of us. Hmm. Paul's telling us you now have tapped into the very power that allowed Jesus to do all the miracles he did. You've tapped into the power that was, that was in creation and you've tapped into the power that's be in Revelation 10 in the future Praise. when he creates a new heaven and a new earth, what we were talking about. When we were born again in Christ, because we're in Christ, we now walk in this delegated power, Brother Copeland, the same power that was from the very beginning. Mm. It's the power of God. Yes, it is. Elohim inside us. El is a construct of the many names of God. Why, by construct, that's a theological term in Hebrew. That means you add things, you construct things to it. Mm -hmm. El Shaddai. Um, uh, El Elyon. Uh, El itself, the Spirit of God. El Ruach. El means power, might, and strength. It's two letters. It's Aleph Lamed in Hebrew. Uh, we would say A and L if you want to in English. It's in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, they were all were pictures. So here's the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. The Aleph is a bull, meaning strong. It's the first, it's the strength, it's the power. And the Lamed looks like a shepherd's staff. Praise God. <laughs> so this authority. Authority, that's exactly yeah. what it is the authority of the shepherd's staff to rescue, to guide, to do whatever he needs to do. So the strong one with authority, my God, that's L. Wow. Yes. He is the ruler, now, supreme ruler with authority. Uh, Greg, I have noticed that Jewish people do that. Mm -hmm. They will, they won't say like, like if I mentioned John, I just say my son. They'll say, my son, the doctor. Absolutely. My son, the teacher. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, my son, the rabbi. Yeah. They, they follow the suit of that. They, they absolutely do. And, and we've kind of missed that. That's part of the blessing. Yes, it is. Part of the covenant blessing. The, the kids are expected. They were born Jewish. They'll be Jewish. They'll marry Jewish. Their, mm -hmm. their children will be Jewish. You know, they, they, they have that expectation of their children. They don't let them decide on their own as, as a whole. I'm painting with a broad paintbrush here, but it's part of the covenant. And this is part of our covenant. We have been given power, full supreme authority because that L word has authority with it. This is the authority of the believer. And Brother Copeland, I think so sad and I've seen so many of it when I, when I was a pastor, people trying to walk in the authority without having any understanding mm -hmm of how it operates <clears throat> without having any understanding of God inside mindness. Really what they're trying to do is a self-help type thing. It's all what Brother Hagen used to call mental ascent. Yes. And it's not coming from their spirit man. It sounds like faith. Yeah. It looks like faith, but it's coming out of the mind, out of the soulish realm. But when it comes out of the spirit, well, that has heart. the breath because he yes. breathed into him and man yes. became a speaking spirit. That's right. Because when it comes out of the breath of God at that point. But the way he breathed in him was by speaking words. Absolutely right. Into his face. Yes. <clears throat> you saw that. Yes, I did. Very plainly. I had a vision of it. And, um, and, and I, I had gone along with the things that I saw where he just, God just formed him up out of the dust. But <clears throat> we're out of time. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Glory to God.
free resource to help you study and apply the Bible-based truths you just heard. Download the BVOV broadcast study notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Collect the notes from each week and use them in a group Bible study. Use the message outline to teach from. Discuss the scriptures and key points with your family of believers. Gain understanding from all the teachings on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Get the whole week of notes today at kcm.org.uk slash notes. Are you done with tolerating defeat in your life? Here's the good news. You can live free from all the baggage of the enemy. You can even demolish burdens in the lives of those around you. How? Through the power of God's anointing. In the audio series, The Power of the Anointing, Kenneth Copeland guides you through scripture to reveal the truth about the anointing and what it can do for you. You will learn exactly what the anointing is, the benefits that the anointing holds, and how to use the power of the anointing. This anointing carries all the power and benefits that Jesus came to deliver. Joy, healing, freedom, eternal life. You can do all things through the anointing. Imagine dominating hurdles in your life and achieving success and having the same type of impact that Jesus did in lives and circumstances everywhere you go. Freedom and success are all wrapped up in the anointing, which is Christ in you. You can live victoriously in every area of your life. Let God's burden-removing, yoke-destroying power completely set you free. Request your free audio series, The Power of the Anointing by Kenneth Copeland on kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or when you call 01225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office today. Don't forget to get the study notes at kcm.org. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you tomorrow, right? You will be here tomorrow. Okay, good. I'm glad you said that. And until then, remember this. God loves you, and we love you, and Jesus Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let the Word of God build your faith. Kenneth Copeland calls kcm.org.uk your study center. You can watch, read, and share faith-based content and teaching resources available to you free. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention, right here in the beautiful city of Fort Worth in the great state of Texas. You tend to yourself and you show love and you show compassion and you walk strong and you walk right because power follows that. Power follows holiness. Power follows righteousness. Power follows it. The power to deliver. The power to stand healed and whole and well. The power to have plenty. The power to be supplied. The power to snatch people out of hell follows a church that is separated unto him. We are supposed to be praying, and I'm not supposed to be preaching, but I cannot help myself. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention. So come get a taste of Texas and save the date for August 1st through the 6th for the Southwest Believers Convention. Register today at kcm.org slash southwest. Hallelujah.